Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and recently the Perseverance rover landed on Mars, which obviously is a huge achievement for science. But whenever a space agency does anything impressive, Flat Earthers are there to complain about it, and it's no different with the Perseverance rover landing. So let's take a look at the issues that Flat Earthers have with this landing. The first video we're going to look at is from Stay Flat Media 7. Ah, so this is one of those people that can't even be bothered to talk in their videos. So, they're showing us a rocket taking off. Why exactly? I thought this was about Mars. Nope, I didn't see anything. I'm blind. How did I read your question? Um... But in all seriousness, all I saw was a rocket booster exploding. Although, it probably didn't help that I'd sped the video up by four times because there was a lot of unnecessary stuff put in there. Oh my! A big red arrow! When a big red arrow is in something, then you know that it's important. Ah, so what he's pointing out there is it appears to be a small video glitch. In fact, I have seen plenty of these glitches in my video editor when it can't quite keep up with what's being played. When this happens, it will actually skip ahead a bit so that the video doesn't end up being two seconds out of sync. Mind you, this is only in the editor, not when I render a video. Now that may not convince everyone, but there is more evidence that this isn't some CGI that Michael Bay decided to produce. So as it turns out, this was from the Starship SN9 flight test, which exploded. But there was more than one camera angle to capture the explosion. And with the other camera angles, there doesn't appear to be anything wrong. So yeah, it's just a simple video glitch. And if you think that a video glitch is a far-fetched explanation, remember, you think that it was a CGI glitch. You can tell it's real because it looks so fake. Ah, that line, which Flat Earthers love to point out. But he's not wrong there. So when Hollywood makes movies which involve seeing the Earth from outer space, it is made to look... 10 times better than what it really is. And it's actually to the point where it's hyper-realistic. You see, the goal of Hollywood movies isn't to make things look how they're supposed to look, it's to make them look how humans expect them to look. And humans can have a different idea of how they expect something to look to how it actually looks. A very classic example of this is in sound design. And that's when you draw a sword out of a sheath. Drawing a sword out of a sheath doesn't really make any sound, but in a lot of movies and a lot of video games, it does, because people expect it to make a sound. And the same goes for seeing pictures of the Earth from outer space, because you may expect it to look a certain way because of Hollywood movies, but it doesn't really look that way. Ah, here's the Perseverance landing, finally. Did they really ask that question? Alright, I'm going to be completely honest with everyone. The clip that we just watched was in fact CGI. Now as shocking as that may be to some people, it doesn't mean that the Perseverance rover landing was fake, because NASA never claimed that that was actual footage of the Perseverance rover. I think NASA just kind of expected most people to work out that it had just landed and they were showing us footage of what they were going to do, not what they had actually done. Now with that insane amount of ignorance, I think that it's time to move on to another Flat Earther that thinks that the Perseverance landing was fake. Good old Level Earth Observer. Wonder what he's got to say. Mars Perseverance, which launched in July 2020, cost two. 0.4 billion dollars to build and launch 
and will cost another 300 million to land and operate during its first year on Mars. So because landing a rover on Mars is very difficult to do, that makes it very expensive. This isn't just something you can do for five bucks. Now the sad thing is about all these shots when the control rooms at NASA, um, they are literally photo shoots, taking advantage of naive kids who work here, who get worked up into a frenzy because their ego's involved over some data that comes in on a screen. Well, this is something that you would want to capture on video. And let's say Level Earth Observer did something impressive like get married. Wouldn't he want to capture it on video to at least preserve the memory? And you can see the camera's all about to capture this moment in time. So this gets played back for years to come as somehow trying to solidify this charade, this Martian charade. This heliocentric charade. Oh, he's learnt a new word aside from pantomime. Charade. I guess that's his new favourite word now. So let's have a look at these young, innocent, naive kids being taken advantage of as we are literally viewing a photo shoot of naive kids getting worked up over data on a screen. Touch on confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars. Ready to begin seeking the sands of past life. So it didn't look like they were simply getting worked up over data on a screen, as LEO would have you believe. It looked like they were getting worked up over the fact that the rover had landed safely. And honestly, who can blame them for being so excited? This has been a project that has taken nine months. So of course you'll be excited for it to finally land. Sad really, when you know, when you can see it for what it is, it's quite sad. What is sad is when someone with no notable achievements tries to belittle others for their achievements. So at 2.4 billion, let's see what is being served up now. That was when they landed. Let's see now what is being served up. Because if the numbers on the screen are getting these kids worked up, Surely the things that are to come are going to send these kids into overdrive. So Elio seems to be under the impression that it's just numbers on a screen that are getting these people worked up. I wonder, has Elio ever done any project ever? Or for that matter, has he sat an exam and then passed? Because this is very much like getting your exam papers back and seeing that you've passed with an A. You'd be very excited just by seeing that A, wouldn't you? But by Elio's logic, it would just be letters on a piece of paper and why are you getting so worked up, right? This is an image of the rover Perseverance slung beneath the descent stage. It's this clown made himself look ridiculous with the last Mars charade. He didn't have a Scooby-Doo who was supposed to be the manager of the project. He didn't have a clue about anything. Well, who says that? Because all I'm hearing is Elio saying that. And as we all know, LEO is really the one that doesn't have a Scooby-Doo about anything. You can see the mechanical bridles that hold the uh, uh, rover underneath the descent stage. It has three straight lines heading down to the top deck. And then the curly electrical umbilical. Matey boy, you make this about as exciting as a trip to the morgue. Well, LEO isn't really one to speak here because his videos don't exactly have me on the edge of my seat. And they certainly don't have me coming back for more. You're not feeling it, and neither am I. You're not convincing, and neither's the image on the screen. So Elio, I think you might have misspoke there. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to redo that part, okay? And go. You're not feeling it, and neither am I. You're not convincing, and neither am I. Congratulations, you got it right. All right, let's continue. Even if it is real, it's hardly scientific. It's not blowing me away. It might get the kids in the control room worked up, but dear oh dear. So it sounded like for a second that Elio said highly scientific, and that surprises me because I actually agree with Elio for once. It is highly scientific. And when Elio says that it's not blowing him away, well, here's the thing. NASA isn't trying to cater to flat earthers. They're just showing, hey, this is what we've done. That's all. There is obviously a lot more than that, but not everyone has a particular interest in X-ray lithochemistry, and not everyone knows what that means, myself included. Uh, this image was acquired by the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, or MRO, um, one of our orbiters. And then you'll get served up this, some Mars Orbiter, 
takes a picture of this, and what's that top right? It's supposed to be the craft coming in with a parachute. Unbelievable. Wait, do you expect to see the rover and the parachute in something like 4K from something that's orbiting Mars? Here's something that Elio needs to know. Things that are orbiting planets tend to be pretty far away from the surface. And also, with the image that Elio had on the screen, the rover and the parachute only take up a tiny little bit of the image. So, why would you expect them to look crisp and clear? Uh, if you look uh, just below uh, to the little circle uh, that you see on the screen, uh, this was our eventual touchdown point. Yeah, right. I'm sure it was, me old mate. I'm sorry. Again, not convincing. Hold on. Does Elio have any better commentary than nah -uh? Elio, you're getting rather boring. You're just not feeling it, I don't think. Ridiculous amount of money. Naive kids in the control room being taken advantage of. Images that I could produce for a ridiculously low cost. Hey, Elio, there's a little, little difference between these images that you can create and the ones that NASA have. You see, the ones that NASA have are actually of Mars. It takes quite a bit of money to actually get there. You, on the other hand, wouldn't be able to take images like that of Mars. Stories being made up left, right and centre that can't be verified. This is like the perfect fraud, isn't it? So Elio, how would you expect them to verify it to you? Because I suspect that there is nothing that this rover can produce that would convince you because you're unwilling to believe at all that the rover is real. I suspect that any image that this rover produces or any image of this rover, you'll just call it fake. Any data that this rover acquires, you'll also call this fake. So how would you expect to verify it? Uh, this was an image captured by our rear hazard avoidance camera. I mean, even in this bloke's voice, he's not exactly buzzing with enthusiasm. Elio, you were criticizing the people before that were buzzing with enthusiasm. So you really can't win with you, can you? And also there's this thing called professionalism. You might want to look into it. Now we have our somewhat lower resolution, but... <sighs> Please tell me, what is scientific about these pictures, these stories? That, what, what is scientific about that? Okay, let's say that I didn't believe that mountains existed, and you took a photo of a mountain, and then I asked you, what's scientific about that? That'd be kind of ridiculous, wouldn't it? How does this help people suffering right now as a result of what's going on? Doesn't, does it? So we're not allowed to advance science whilst bad things are happening in the world now, huh? Well, Elio, you're using a phone, and whilst that phone was being made, bad things were happening in the world. People were suffering whilst that phone was being made. What did that phone do to help those people? Given the so-called achievements made back in space in the 60s, all this should have been done years ago, and it should have been filmed, mapped. We should have satellites, f radio towers on Mars, and all sorts by now, but no. Wait, has no one told him yet? Elio, there are satellites around Mars. This is not something new. We've been launching satellites to Mars for decades now. And the reason why there hasn't been a lot of exploration on Mars so far is because there hasn't really been any incentive to do so. Back when NASA landed on the moon, the Cold War was going on, which was a pretty big incentive for them to try and land on the moon, but the Cold War is over now. And the Cold War did incentivize going to Mars as well because both the Soviets and NASA launched probes to Mars. Do we get anything that is would even resemble something that would be classed as science? I mean, I would have thought filming coming in in HD footage would be classed as scientific. Wait, so do you mean like um, this video here showing the descent to Mars? Yes, this does exist. It also isn't all that hard to find. You just have to look for it. I found this just by simply Googling. But now we'll just get these dodgy camera angles and just ridiculous explanations and... Don't forget about the video, Elio. 
So one of the amazing things about these cameras is they're actually- There it is guys. This is the image we've been waiting for. The most scientific image I've ever come across in the heliocentric pantomime picture book. Oh, there's the word pantomime that I was waiting for. He did say it. The track, the wheel of the Mars lander. This is the one we've been waiting for. This alone was worth the 2.4 billion and the additional $300 million to follow. Incredible. So to me, that camera looks like a hazard avoidance camera. A camera primarily used to avoid hazards. But what are you expecting photos of? Rocks? Well, guess what? There's rocks in that photo too. So the rest of the video is just Elio not realizing that the rover is there to do way more than just take photos. As you may remember earlier, I said about X-ray lithochemistry. So I think that will be... Example Wait, what is that? Evolutionary beliefs oh driving research. So Ken Ham has decided to talk about the Perseverance rover, but he's not so much denying that it's a thing. He's more thinking that the money could have been put to better use. Well, this is an example of evolutionary beliefs driving research. NASA is spending $3 billion primarily to see if there was once life on Mars. So here, Ken Ham is partially correct. They are primarily trying to see if Mars once had life on it. And I don't really see a problem with that. Even if you're a young Earth creationist, I'd say that finding life on other planets would be very interesting as it would attest to God's ability to just create life wherever. What an impact there might be if that $3 billion was spent to show people life on Earth could never have evolved by natural processes. And that the very first verse of the Bible is confirmed by science. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1.1. So firstly, point me to the peer-reviewed article that shows that the first verse of the Bible has been confirmed by science. I'll be waiting. And no, answers in Genesis doesn't count. Secondly, a lot of money has been spent attempting to show that life couldn't evolve by natural selection. Unfortunately, what happens is it tends to show that life can have evolved by natural selection. If you know anything about how science works, then you'll know that science is always attempting to disprove things, not prove them. And thirdly, isn't Ken Ham a millionaire? So rather than building an ARC counter that no one wanted to go to, why doesn't he just fund research into creationism? Spending three billion dollars to proclaim God's word and the gospel has eternal value, as every human soul will live forever in heaven or hell. So Ken Ham, why don't you spend all your money and do that? I'm sure you'd love to spend all your money for the good of humanity, right? All this sounds like to me is Ken Ham is annoyed that he didn't get three billion dollars. And you know what? He can go sit with the flat earthers that are salty that they didn't get three billion dollars either. Anyway, that was a fun video. I do have to give a huge thank you to Hugh Jars for doing all the voices for Ken Ham. I did have to get an Australian to read out what an Australian had said. So make sure you go check out Hugh Jars' channel. There'll be a link in the description. And I also believe that FTFE will be releasing a video about this subject soon, if he hasn't already. So go check that out. But before you do that, make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. And make sure to ring the bell notification so that you actually get notified of when I post new videos. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. What Jesus, Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Jane Spade, Wolfie, Mori, The Friendly Antinatalist, Graymoor Ghost, and Kid Vicious. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. There should be a link there. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.